Welcome, Writer Moms. Today, I'm very excited to be able to bring you a special guest, David Rogers. Uh, David was born with a rare condition that's called aphantasia. He'll explain what that's about. And he also has another condition, which is abbreviated SDAM. And that stands for severe, Severely Deficient Autobiographical Memory. David lives in upstate New York with his wife, Roxanne, of 44 years, and he has two adult children. Uh, David spent more than 27 years working at Xerox Research, and he has worked for several other companies since 1977 as an embedded software engineer. It wasn't until 2021, and quite very recently, that David discovered that he had these memory deficiencies, and um, he was surprised to learn they actually had a name. So David today is going to share with us a little bit about his life journey and how his aphantasia has, affects his life growing up and how it affects his daily life right now. And he's also going to uh, share with us a little bit about the book he's writing. Uh, David is uh, one of us. He's in our group, and he is writing a book, just like you are. And his book is not a fiction book. It's entitled Journey into the Darkness, an aphantasic journey into the second mind. And as he'll explain, his notebox, his battle casting is his second mind. So I'm very, very, very excited to introduce you to David. Uh, so, David, can you start us off with what is aphantasia? Yes, uh, aphantasia, the condition has been known about for uh, a long time, but it wasn't until 2015 that the word aphantasia was coined in the science community. Uh, aphantasia is the inability to visualize with your mind images. Your mind's eye is just darkness, or it can be a varying degree of that. So that's what the aphantasia is. They're finding out uh, it's a rare condition. Um, so it's uh, just beginning of research. Well, what are the characteristics of aphantasia? Okay, uh, aphantasia. As I mentioned, uh, it, you have varying abilities to visualize something. If someone says, visualize a red apple, most people will see a color red apple in their mind's eye. Whereas myself, I see blackness. And I always see blackness. But, uh, that is the predominant uh, condition. Uh, you cannot use you cannot visualize past memories usually, and you also cannot visualize or plan for future events either. That uh, uh, and this will vary from person to ver person. Um, so that's uh, some of the effects of it, and you may not have any dreams or be able to daydream. Very interesting. Do they know what causes aphantasia? No, they don't. Uh, research, uh, they know very little about the details because it's only in the last uh, five, 10 years that it has been taken seriously in doing research on it. Um, but it, so it's at the beginning stages of research. Um, they believe only 0.01% to 5% of people have this type of condition, uh, condition. And it is a condition. It is not a disease like uh, Alzheimer's or Parkinson's. It's just a different way the brain thinks. What are the side effects, David? How does it show up in your life? But the, a lot of the side effects, because uh, they're... Current research does show a link with some aphantasiacs of short and long-term memory deficiencies. 
and I uh, definitely have both of those. Um, also, uh, some of the, I'll talk about some of the uh, negative side effects. Uh, uh, I only have a couple of memories of my childhood. I only have, I have three brothers and I only have one memory of him at all. Uh, my younger brother, I don't have any memories of him. But when I see pictures of me in the picture, say, yeah, I, uh, I, that's me. I was there, but I don't think I don't remember on demand or command uh, those memories. And I should have said that word command before, because most aphrontasiacs have memories, but they can't on command recall those memories. Very interesting. But if you don't have a memory, how do you know where you parked your car or things like that? that uh, so my wife and I, we've lived in this house uh, for over 33 years. I know exactly where everything is at. Uh, we shop at the same shopping store for the last 33 years. I park at the about the same parking spot at the grocery store. Um, the grocery list, I do the shopping because my wife also has a uh, disability. I do the shopping and the shopping list is in order on how the rows in the store uh, goes. At the, so it is, it's not that I don't have memory. There is memory there, but uh, I cannot use it as other people can. Uh, it's mostly uh, muscle memory and in many aspects. Uh, I'm a black belt in martial arts and that's totally muscle memory. If you think about it, you're done. And uh, so that's uh, some of the side effects. Um, sometimes you cannot uh, remember where you put things. That, uh, that doesn't happen often uh, for me. Um, but most of all, when I read a book, I almost instantly don't remember what I just read. That's why I have to write note cards on what I just read. And even the thoughts of what I just read, I uh, uh, reformulate it and write it on my note cards. So I, uh, most of us uh, depend on our memories because it works, but a lot of, uh, we're a fantastic forgetting machine. Fascinating. So have, have you mentioned note cards a couple of times? Um, so uh, our writer moms are encouraged to keep a note box to track their writing and to track what they learn in the course. Uh, do you keep a note box? Yes, I not only keep a note box, but for my 27 years at Xerox Research, we were required because of the, because of the patent laws to write down every thought and every experiment that we did. So for the 27 years, I filled up dozens and dozens of these inch thick library uh, lab books. Uh, and a lab book has a number on it, that's all. And each page has a page number and a title. Well, I discovered if I created a daily journal that reference what I did that day, I could find those experiments years later. Wow. So that, in many aspects, uh, it was a precursor to what we know as a, a note box. Because with a note box, you have the crib card of the gist of your thoughts. And you have a lot of people have an index box, just like a library catalog uh, cabinet, uh, you, you go to that index box and go find that thought that you uh, want to find. Fascinating. So in your job, it sounds like between your lab notebooks, which probably everyone had, and your daily journal that you needed to keep because of your aphantasia, it almost seems as though you could outperform people who had enough memory that they could kind of rely on memory because you could go straight to it. 
Yes, and uh, what I wrote was not vague. It was accurate because we had to be accurate because of the patent laws. So uh, there was no nothing missing. Uh, along that line, uh, Catherine, uh, is research has shown that uh, IQ is not based on your ability to remember facts. It's on your ability of focusing. And uh, uh, one of the positive aspects of having aphantasia, I don't have images floating around in my head that distracts me in trying to focus. Um, so when you're going about your daily life, what's going on in your head? A lot of times uh, it is blank because uh, I am going about doing things out of muscle memory and you generally don't think about muscle memory. That um, uh, there's a, uh, I'm reading a book called Flow and the, the doctor interviewed hundreds uh, of professionals of getting into what he calls the zone. A lot of athletes get into the zone and they just block out the world. And um, I'll read you a quote from uh, this. Uh, he's a profesh professor. And let me see if I can find it here. Yeah. And uh, so this is a doctor of uh, psychology. He interviews hundreds of professionals from all walks of life about when they are in the flow and what it is like. One specific interview caught my attention. He interviewed a professor of physics that is a freestyle mountain climber. A freestyle mountain climber doesn't use ropes. That does. The climber is very clear describing how his mind behaves during his climbing from minute to minute when his life can easily end. And this is from the climber. My state of mind while climbing is as follows. It is as if my memory input has been cut off. All I remember is the last 30 seconds. And all I can think of ahead is the next five minutes. End of quote. That very much describes my continual condition of what I call living in the now. Fascinating. We're all, so many times we have been invited and encouraged to live in the now, to focus in on what's happening around us and be present to the people around us. And this is, this is your normal state. Yes, and it's so uh, common because uh, uh, many of us have had children and when they get into watching something or a, a, a spouse and you ask them a question and they don't even hear you because they are so focused on what they're doing or watching. That is very much a, their version of the zone. Everything else is blocked out. Fascinating. So how did you... Um come across the idea for the notebox as you are working with it now? Okay, uh, so a little history on how I discovered the name. Uh, about, oh, five years, seven years, I forget the, how many years ago, I wanted to learn a second language, uh, Koine Greek. So I spent a good year using what's called the Lechner memory system, and I just was not making good progress. That only a, a few hundred words in a whole year, probably repetitiously repeating the words and meaning uh, a couple hours a day. Uh, I. My drive to work is a half hour there, half hour back. So that's one hour, then I have an hour lunch. Um, so I said, hey, there has to be a better way. So I went to Udemy and took about a year's worth of classes on the different memory systems. 
and they did not work for me at all. They use uh, mnemonics, uh, memory palace. Those are some of the buzzwords. Uh, you essentially remember a room, different items in the room, and you sh associate those items with a name that you want to remember. So one of the world-renowned uh, uh, instructors on this subject mentioned, well, if you can't envision a memory palace well, you may have aphantasia. I never heard that word before. And when I took that class, that was only a, a few years after that the word came on uh, site. So I looked up aphantasia and um, found out, uh, it explained a whole bunch of challenges I've had throughout my life, Catherine. Um, I was punished in elementary school because I always flunked my spelling tests and writing tests. I was put out into the hall. I was kept after class writing the words on the blackboards with chalk. Uh, and it didn't matter how many times I wrote the word, it made no difference. That, uh, and um, uh, not remembering where I put down the grocery list and things of that nature, uh, my wife would always get after me on that. Um, and, not, and I knew at work professionally, I've uh, always kept the lab books when there wasn't computers uh, uh, available. And when computers became available, to my demise, I started to keep things electronically. Research has shown that if you keep it electronically, that is very different than if you handwrite. That, uh, because typing is almost no thought in typing. It's instantly from whatever you see, whatever you hear into your fingers. Uh, don't stop at uh, uh, go past go, whatever. And uh, whereas writing, you got to think about, as you well know, what you're writing. So, uh, so I took those case uh, things. I uh, said, okay, maybe I want to write a book on the affrontation in my journey. Well, I've never been one to take notes while researching, per se, or reading a book. So I said, oh, I'll go on to Amazon and look for books on the uh, uh, note taking, and I found a book called How to Take Smart Notes uh, okay. by Zanke Aaron. And it wasn't too far that few pages into it, I found the word zettelkasten. Oh, that's another word that I've never heard before, and most people haven't. And uh, I did a uh, YouTube uh, search on that, and I found uh, Scott Shepard's uh, YouTubes about the uh, what he called the anti-net, and I binged, uh, watched it. I said, "Hey, this is a lot like of what I did for 27 years, but more advanced." And that's how I started uh, developing uh, my uh, note boxes. Oh, very interesting. Um, so what did you find the most challenging about setting up your notebox? The most challenging is uh, both uh, almost all uh, instructions on uh, addresses of the note boxes use uh, the outline of academic disciplines or Dewey Decimal System. Those two arenas, I have no idea of what the words mean. Uh, sociology, I have no idea what the meaning of the word is. And if I looked it up, I very quickly would forget. So I knew I had to create a different numbering system that works for me, that takes far less mental effort. Uh, while researching about uh, Zettelkast and I found out that uh, one individual had a, his first set of boxes were just numbers. They were not uh, uh, Dewey Decimal. So the first 
article or book that he read would have the branch number one. The second book, two. Third book, three, I said, I can do that. Oh, fascinating. And uh, within that branch is a sequence of cards on the different key sections that I'm capturing as I read the book. Oh, With the traditional uh, note box, you uh, create a, a note card and you gotta remember where, where in your notebook, note box is this thought been used before and group those cards together. That takes a good memory. Oh, fascinating. So um, I understand that that you have a, a short document that you can share with our viewers on how your numbering system works in case they wanna have another idea of how might they set up their box. Yes, uh, I will be, uh, I gave you one version of that. I am updating it. And uh, hopefully by uh, this weekend, I will have uh, the completed version of it because I've, uh, I've enhanced it recently because I plan on doing blogging and podcasting. So I've added uh, how I want to use those numbers. And uh, so, uh, but also uh, your readers, if they get this document or if they have any more questions about this condition, uh, contact uh, Kathleen. She can uh, get a hold of me easily and I'd be more than happy to uh, talk about it. Oh, I would love to do that too. And also um, when your podcast uh, is goes live, we'll po I'll post a link to it in the show notes for our interview so that anyone who wants to connect with your podcast will be able to do it. Uh, before we go, though, you're, you're writing a book, aren't you? Yes, a uh, book. Um, and I'm at the beginning stages of uh, uh, acquiring the information um, because I can't just remember my infancy. I can't just remember my childhood. So as those memories uh, pop up, um, I write it down. I always carry this with me. It's always, I use three by five cards because I can put them in my shirt pocket or with this, I can put it in my back pocket. So I can always have something with me. So I, uh, I'm uh, gathering those notes that uh, just uh, uh, going about in preparation for this uh, interview with you has uh, solidified some areas that, um, so yeah, I, in my uh, uh, note box, I have uh, the number uh, 900 and that's all my uh, personal information. Um, that is broken up according to age groups. So my first uh, uh, group is environment. That'd be like my parents and family where I lived. Then uh, the next group would be my infancy, then childhood, then teenage, teenager, uh, young adult, middle age, senior age, and time age. Interesting. So how do you feel that this is going to be of help for people who have aphantasia? So I've taken the, the baseline on how a note box is uh, constructed and I've enhanced it uh, for someone that has uh, memory deficiencies. So, uh, I put more information on my cards than what people usually do, more links and things of that nature. Um, my index cards, I have um, like a, my index card, you would have the primary uh, keyword and I have a gloss definition of that word because I don't always remember the definition of a word. Then, Every primary uh, index card has what I call a hop link card. And that has additional 
words that were in the text that I wrote, but I chose not to use them as the primary word. So, so what, um, what do you mean by that? Synonym, antonym? What? No, uh, I'd say if, uh, uh, like if I, uh, I'll just make up a sentence here. The baker was making bread. There are two key words there. Baker, bread. So you got the subject and object and the verb making. I only uh -huh. use one of those words as my uh, index card word. So I let's say I would use a baker. And on my hop link card, I would have baking, bread, bread. two different lines. Okay, so that, that way you have links to the complete thought that you... Yes. Yes, uh, the complete thought. And as I'm discovering, I didn't realize it when I did that, how it multiplies the opportunities for insight. Because oh. insight comes about combining keywords. Well, I got more keywords. So there's more opportunities for insight. Fascinating, fascinating. They're very, very interesting because, of course, community, your subtitle of your book is, let's tell us uh, the, the name of your book. It's The Doorway into Darkness, and the subtitle is An Appantasiac, Appantasiac Journey into the Second Mind. So tell us about the second mind. Yes, uh, the, the note box are crib notes of your thoughts captured at a specific period of time in your life. That period of time in your life, you think a certain way, you understand certain things in a certain way. And as life progresses, that may change. So you have other notes in your note box showing the evolution of your thought. And we don't naturally remember that changes. We just think of what we currently believe now or understand now. But in the note box, that is a uh, uh, cast uh, unforgettable uh, card that's there. You can re uh, address it. You can pull out a card and say, why did I think that way? There's a, perp There's a reason why I thought that way at that time. And either you liked it or you could reject it uh, like because um the way i uh sectioned off my uh personal uh note cards into infant child those are different personalities those are different characters that in my in my instance it's non-fictional characters but it's the same idea for fiction that uh, there and you uh the behavior and characteristic of me changes over time. And likewise, in a fictional story, the behaviors and character of a fictional person changes over time. And it's all in the uh, Zettelkast. And now, you might see behind me a board. Ah, I've been wondering about that. I've been meaning to ask you about your board there. <laughs> right now, that has about uh, eight cards on how I did my alphanumeric numbering. So since I can't remember stuff, I got to see everything in front of me and see it often. So this is a very simple board uh, that any uh, one that's a little bit handy with uh, some tools can make. And I can put uh, 56 uh, cards on there. Fascinating. You wouldn't happen to have a document that we could share with our viewers here on how you put that together, would you? Uh, that I uh, could. Uh, I uh, wrote uh, something on one of our uh, forms, uh, Kathleen, on uh, what it, the material that uh, it's made out of. It's a very simple, very inexpensive. Um, it's just a uh, two foot by three foot uh, piece of plywood that I painted. 
I used a PVC molding that is found at your lumber store that's used with paneling that's put in a bathroom. It's called a J channel because it has a quarter inch a channel there. And that's where my cards sit. How oh, fascinating. Wow. It's just amazing the way that you have arranged your life so that you have been able to have an external memory to supplement your internal memory. What really struck me was when you were talking about not being able to bring up memories on command. But when you look at those cards, does that work to bring those memories back? Possibly. There are moments in my life that something occurs and it triggers a memory. Uh, several months ago, I totally forgot about, uh, I kept a uh, composition notebook as a child to record all my thoughts and I totally forgot about it. Uh, the title of that uh, composition book was Ideas. And I don't remember what triggered that remembrance of that me doing that, but it occurred a couple months ago, uh, just out of the blue, it, it happened. So my understanding, the memories are there, you just can't recall them on command. So yes, uh, uh, these cards, it does bring uh, uh, some remembrance. Uh, like I know in our group, Kathleen, some people will say, yeah, I remember exactly when I wrote that card. I don't, I don't, but that detail, to me, it's superfluous. superfluous. Oh. It doesn't change things. Oh, okay. Wow. Well, this has really, really been fascinating, David. And um, folks, you know, if you're watching David here and you're enjoying his story, if you have any questions, you know, put your questions in the comments and we'll gather them up and get them to David and maybe have him on again, you know, at another time to answer all your questions. And also, um, if you subscribe to my email list, you can see the link in the um, in description box below. When you do that, then I will send you a link to the document that David's preparing on his numbering system. So that can give you some other ideas on how you can personalize and customize your notebox so that you can have a second mind to, uh, to work with as well. Um, now, David, as we say goodbye, I'm, I thank you so much for taking this time to talk with our writer moms. And before we leave, just as a party here, do you have any thoughts that you want to share with our writer moms? Yes, I uh, do, uh, because I mentioned uh, it um, when I was in elementary school, I was punished because I couldn't remember. There may be writer moms out there that have special needs children that may have the same condition. They cannot remember and they can do nothing about it. Mm -hmm. So we just got to understand everyone is different and everyone, uh, a lot of people think the same way, but there are people that think very differently. And it's uh, because our education system is dependent on being able to repeat what has been said. Well, if you can't remember, you're in deep trouble. And I was in deep trouble all my life until I got into electronics. So and that, that's strange, Kathleen, that um, always flunking out until I got electronics and I got 4.0 without doing homework, without reading. I just absorbed it. Oh, well, thank you so much, David. Your journey has been fascinating. I'm really looking forward to your book when it comes out, uh, to reading more about it. Uh, keep gathering those memories. They're precious. And thank you again so much for coming and talking to our writer moms. Yes, I was enjoyable, and I hope to speak again on the subject. Okay, very good. Thank you. Yeah, bye, bye now.